Right, lads and lasses, welcome to the channel. Thank you all so much for the ones that have subscribed recently. It's your, everyone's support is really um, appreciated. So, what brings us here today? Um, it's a Land Rover. And I'm afraid when you put a sticker, um, the Land Rover sticker or the Range Rover sticker on a toy, even the toys eventually break down. And I'm afraid um, this one's problem today is I took it for a, a relaxed spin today with some friends. And it's probably gonna be a bit tricky to see, um, depending on if the camera focuses on all. The CVD, that joint there, broke pretty much. I'm not sure if it was defective from factory as I've got the Jimny and I think the Jimny is exactly the same or roughly the same structure with the same CVD, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's roughly the same CVD and that joint there has broken. Um, so it's not supposed to do this, it's supposed to be locked as that. So yes, that's the conundrum for today's video. I have ordered um, a new front CVD set. Unfortunately, they don't sell just that bit. They sell the whole thing um, as a kit. So what we're gonna do today, um, I hope I have the right tools. If not, I'll have to think about something else. I'll try and disassemble that bit <coughs> um, to see if I can get to the CVD. I've never done this. Um, in all fairness, this is the first issue I've ever had with any of my FMS RC cars. So, and take a guess, had to be a Land Rover. Jokes aside, um, very good car, but I'm just not sure, again, if this was a, a, like a, a factory defect or if the car is simply too heavy for that little piece of metal, especially it's not the whole thing, it's just the joint uh, that broke. So I'm not sure if if it's a, a, a known issue. I've never seen any videos on, on YouTube or any information out there of anyone that has broken that. Uh, in all fairness, I'm a bit disappointed because I, I treat my FMS cars as shelf queens. So I never pushed them too hard. But having said that, my six year old has been using this car today and I don't want to blame him, uh, but he may have been my six-year-old who um, pushed the car uh, too hard. Uh, anyways, <coughs> so, whoopsie, I'm already moving some bits. So the first thing we need to take off is this little um, hub, plastic hub thing. So I'm gonna put that there so we don't lose it. And this is a different system from the other FMSs. Uh, the 112s, they tend to have uh, bespoke systems. So this is not a hex um, system, it's a, a nut system. Um, I've taken one of these wheels off once to check what was underneath it and it's a different system so I will fast forward this bit because this may take a bit longer. Oh, got battery hands today, I don't know why. I will fast forward this bit because otherwise it will become too long of a video. Back again. So I've managed to take that bit off. As you can see, that's the bit it's broken, that is the broken CVD, provided the camera focuses, there you go. And the best way to take this off is you unscrew the, um, oh, good Lord, I'm losing my English now, the steering shaft, and then you unscrew <coughs> the upper and lower uh, shafts, and this comes off. This, this bit, this connection here is a bitch to take off unless you want to take off the whole body. Um, you can only do it with a small um, Allen key um, and even so is a bitch to, um, to unscrew whereas the lower one is easy, as I just put it there. So I've noticed that <clears throat> this hub here is connected in place by a very small uh, nut there. I haven't got anything in my tools 
or any adequate tool that could take that off. So I'm gonna unfortunately <coughs> use a this small thingy here to see if I'm lucky without uh, chewing on the nut. And then I have no clue on how to take that off. But one step at a time, dare I say. <coughs> It's a bit of a tricky one, but it seems to be moving without me chewing the tools, so we'll see. Good lord, why couldn't they do this like any other small RC? <coughs> FMS, if anyone is listening from FMS, we do love the realism of your 1-12 scales, but for crying out loud, is this really needed? Is this much detail really needed? Because if something breaks, who in God's name is going to have the adequate tool to take that bonkers minute nut out of the way? Seriously. Seriously. I'm all, for, I'm all for scale stuff, but, you know, I don't think we need this much scale. Something, a system a bit more simple would be good, um, especially when, when you are unlucky enough to break stuff, and it's not as if you're gonna break, it's when you're gonna break, so that's how small that little nut is. Bloody annoying, FMS. Bloody annoying, seriously. So, that little thing comes out. Yeah, and then this seems to be like the underneath of any 7mm hex with that little pin there and that's probably how then the whole thing comes out. Let's see. Let's <coughs> take this out of the way for now. There you go. And that's how you take that little pin out and all of this comes out. I'm not sure. So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna save this because I'm not sure to be honest if the set, the new set comes with this. So just in case, I'm not I'm not gonna throw anything in the bin today until I get a new CPD. So wheel bearing, which is lovely, we all know that. We all prefer bearings than bushings, to be honest. And uh Good lord, I, I don't know, not very, there, and that is the bit that's broken. So the next step is to try and find how to remove that ball joint from this assembly here, which I'm assuming it has something to do with that little black metal clamp. So the next challenge is to try and find myself yet another tool, small enough to try and take that little metal clamp out. Um, I'm sure I've seen on the new set two new clamps, so if I bend or break this one, it won't be a massive problem because the new set comes with uh, two ones. So just recapping, because I need to build a visual memory of this. So that goes in there, like that. And then that little bit goes on top of this. Yeah, should be easy. <coughs> should be relatively easy. There you go. Bearing off that one there. And yeah, like that, that is that is how thin that CVD joint is um, when compared to the weight of this car, because this is a relatively heavy um, RC car, so I don't, you know, FMS, if anyone is watching this, probably would be worth doing a bit of a, a thicker CVD uh, shaft with a thicker joint. I don't know. Again, I haven't abused the this particular car. I've never had any issues with the 112 Suzuki chimney, which I'm assuming it's exactly the same type of CVD joint. Um, but this one, for whatever reason, um, just broke. And I've ended up with a three wheel drive um, Land Rover, which is, you're not gonna go anywhere with a three wheel drive Land Rover, to be honest. So yeah, I'm gonna try and find a tool to take this little clamp off and then we'll be back. So it seems that this little um, metal spring thingy, you can actually take it easily with your um, fingernail. Not sure how to take that bit off, but it must be related to that little pin over here. Um, having said that, the new set does come with these heads and that with <clears throat> with the new shaft so that is basically what's broken that is supposed to be connected to that and then it kind of moves around as the steering wheel moves around so yeah here we go that's that's our first problem of the Land Rover Series 2 um, FMS Bit of an unfortunate one, I must confess. I wasn't expecting a metal <coughs> joint 
to break as easily as this one did. But hey ho, there's another set on uh, on order. I will make a second video of uh, when the set comes through the post on how to put all of that back together. Until then, thanks for the support and cheerio.